In today's do's and don'ts video, we're going to take a close look at some much requested doubles and more specifically, defensive positioning. And the first mistake here is being directly side by side when the shuttle is in either back corner. This will leave a gap on our cross court that our opponents can exploit because they can hit faster and steeper due to the angles. It also doesn't allow us to capitalize on any cross court shots. There's also another mistake here when we've hit a good lift into either back corner that you might be able to spot, but we'll come onto that later. The side on view really helps us see what we should be doing as the cross player, and that is being slightly closer to the net than your partner. This is because we have more time to defend the smash because the cross smash is a longer distance and allows us to cover and potentially exploit the cross drop and if we get onto the shuttle early, this can be a great opportunity to flick down the line or block and follow the shuttle in for a nice counter attack. What happens if they put it behind us? Well, the cross court clear is rarely played and if they do, it's the easiest shot to cover because the shuttle takes such a long time to get from corner to corner, giving us plenty of time. In this game scenario, you'll see the cross player in front, making it much easier for them to take the cross drop but giving them plenty of time to defend the smash higher up in the court. As the cross player is closer, he will be looking to take these shots down the middle. And we will discuss this more in the video later on. We've already looked at how deep in the court we should be standing in relation to the shuttle. We're now going to look at the width more precisely. What we shouldn't be doing when the shuttle is in either corner is standing directly in the center of our halves. What this will do is leave a gap down the tram lines for our opponent to exploit with a straight smash. As the straight defender, you can see the gap I'm leaving. If he plays it here, it might be difficult for me to reach and get the racket out in time. And even if I do, it might be difficult to vary my defense with a lift or a cross shot. This is also the shot we have the least amount of time for. So we really need to be prepared for this shot first. So if we leave this gap, it can make defending very difficult and overreaching to cover this gap can make hitting cross very difficult which will limit our options. You'll see clearly in these rallies the gaps that are left as a result of this defensive positioning. A good opponent will know it's harder for their opponent to cross the shuttle if they smash down the tram lines which makes it easier for them to channel their attack. This means the front player can move across and look to anticipate and better intercept the straight return because they know it's difficult for the defenders to play cross when the shuttle is either behind their opponent or they're overstretching and under pressure. So what should we be doing? Well, we need to be moving our bases across slightly to the same side the shuttle has been lifted to. So if the shuttle is lifted to this side, we'll both move across to the same side slightly allowing us to better cover that straight smash down the tram lines. The cross player will also move across so there is not a massive gap between us, meaning he'll be responsible for covering shots down the center. It works exactly the same on the opposite side. Again, covering that gap down the tram lines with the cross player moving across to cover the smash, drop and clear down the center of the court. This side we see professionals move across even more when under pressure to cover their forehands, improving their reaction times because they can hit everything backhand and don't need to waste time changing grips when under extreme pressure. The rallies in this practice highlight how the straight defender is closing that gap down the tram lines and defending backhand, but relies on their partner again to cover the cross shots down the center of the court. Again, it's the same on the opposite side, as you can see here with the rolls reversed, ensuring that gap down the side tram lines is covered off. Let's take a look at this in a game situation. You'll see we move our bases across to cover the straight smash more effectively. And then when we lift cross court, we move our bases across together, ensuring we cover the straight smash down the line on the opposite side. I think of this positioning as a triangular defense which helps me to picture our positions as a partnership. As we're defending, it's important we move across and defend together as a pair. The cross player should ensure there isn't a big gap between 
and that he has the middle covered, making the area the straight player is defending smaller. Yes, this leaves a gap for the wide cross smash, but you have a lot more time to cover this and the straight return from here is into an open space on our opponent's side. This side by side shows a slight difference in position and how by moving your base across allows the straight player to more easily defend the attack with his backhand, meaning you can intercept the shuttle higher up in the court and potentially hit a more effective return. Next up is our defensive stance and how we should be setting our feet up for the smash. What we don't want to do is have a bias to one side stance like this with the body side on. This makes defending one side very difficult and can potentially mean the hip in front blocks the shot like this, making our technique cramped and resulting in a weaker return with more mistakes. In this routine, you can see how we are both side on, being over biased to one side of our defense. This makes shots towards us in certain areas more difficult to defend and at times difficult to lift or cross. If you're counting the mistakes and the shots we miss in this routine, there are quite a few. We should position our feet either square onto the net or with our racket leg slightly back and hips facing the shuttle. What this will do is give us more space when our opponent is smashing at the racket hip as it doesn't get in the way when defending around the forehand hip and also gives us quicker reactions because we don't have to take time changing the grip which allows us to defend and strike the shuttle further in front of our bodies. As we are now striking the shuttle in front of us and the shuttle isn't too close to our bodies, it will help us to defend with more power and variety on those returns. In the routine, you'll see we're both facing forwards towards the shuttle with our racket legs slightly back. And I hope you'll agree our defense here is a lot more solid hit it with more control and precision with much fewer mistakes. I actually don't think we made any here. Please let us know in the comments if you enjoyed our doubles do's and don'ts and want to see more doubles content from us. If you'd like to develop more power on your backhand clear and hit your clears all the way to the back then click on this video here and we'll see you in the next one.